make sure this one's for real. He's a tough little guy. He sure is. He seems a lot friskier now. That soy milk did the trick. I think you're gonna make it. What do you think of that, Barney? I'm gonna be sorry to take him over to the game farm. Well, we could always teach him how to swim. I'm sure the fish will like that. Come on, settle down. That okay. Hello? Yeah. Just a moment, please. Grant? Here. Go to your mom there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, you're so yes. cute. I understand. Have you called a search and rescue? Yes. Will you please call me every couple of hours, whether you find out anything or not? I'll be either at my home or here. Drinks. Grant, what's wrong? Oh, it's uh, JL's plane. Three hours overdue. She never reached her destination. Oh, no. Is there anything I can do to help? No, all we can do is wait. I'm sure it's just some small mechanical failure. Yeah, there was no distress signal. She was flying up the straight. She could be almost anywhere. So I guess we might as well just get back to work. You should go home. All right. I'll call you later. This is Vancouver Coast Guard Radio, Vancouver Coast Guard Radio, Vancouver Coast Guard Radio. At 201545, a coordinate universal time, a single Hello. engine a beaver oh, hi, George. on the floats. I no, nothing more yet. Charlie Foxtrot, Oscar, Charlie, and Julia. I'll let you know. White and yellow, with oh, one God. person on board, has been reported overdue on a flight over Georgia Strait. All vessels are requested to keep a sharp lookout and report any sightings. More information to the nearest Coast Guard radio station. A rain forecast uh, valid for a, a two four hour period commencing a one five zero zero uh, coordinate universal time. Bet she's Friday, going nuts August out there with a broken radio. I can hear her now. May 4 code, yeah. Ronda Fuga Strait, one six one one zero. Waves near one meter. Straight up. I wish Georgia. there was something we could do. One six two one zero. As soon as it gets light, we'll join the search. Plain language forecast.
Hello? Oh, thank God. Where? I see. I see. We'll be right there. Sandra? She's unconscious. They're flying her to Vancouver, General. Well, is, is it serious? Did she crash? No, the plane's intact. Not even a scratch. Well, how is she? They don't know. This is not my code. I don't need a code. I'm Grant Roberts. My wife's a patient here. Uh, Dr. Roberts? I'm Dr. Elliot. These are my children, Jonah and Nicole. Hi. I should prepare you. She's in a coma. Nobody said anything about an injury. Why is she in a coma? We don't know. Her body's reacting to exposure to some kind of toxic chemical. The fisherman we picked up is uh, in a coma, too. Can we see her? Of course. Look, I should tell you that without knowing what put your wife in this condition, we have no antidote, so we can only treat her symptomatically. Did she say anything? No, she was unconscious when we found her. But Mr. Keep mumbled something about, about bubbles and the tank uh, as it became comatose. Here. I'll be down the hall if you need me. JL. It's me, Grant. Hang on, sweetheart. Just hang on. Captain Myers, mm. thanks for coming down. Uh, Jonah and Nicole, this is Jane Myers. How do you do? So, Dr. Roberts, now you can tell me why we had to meet at Jake Keep's boat. We've been over it with a fine-tooth comb. Uh, feel free to look around, though. Here's a report. Yes. You'd think something strong enough to knock out two people the way that stuff did would leave a residue. Well, it had to come from the air or the water. And until we identify what that substance is, other lives could be in danger. I share your concern, believe me. Well, then why isn't a full-scale search going on right now? Don't tell me how to do my job, Dr. Roberts. The area is close to fishermen. All shipping's been notified. We're monitoring vessel traffic. I'm sorry. Why don't we start again? All right. Thanks. Jake Keep said something about a tank and bubbles. Well, we assumed he meant a spill or an accidental dump, but we haven't found anything. There were no reports of any other casualties. Have you seen the paper this morning? No. The politicians, of course, are already on their pre-election offensive. Gold rejects cleanup proposal. Yeah, I know this guy. He's that uh, corporate politician. You got it. Whenever something like this happens, he shows up. Does more harm than good. You got a copy of JL's flight plan? Sure. Now, the X shows where we found the boat and the plane, and the highlighted area is the flight plan. Excuse me. What is that hazard sign? Oh, that's an old military dump from the 50s. Uh, we check it from time to time to make sure nothing's leaking. And it's OK now? It's the first place we looked. You know, on the off chance that Jake hooked a barrel. What was dumped there? I have no idea. But military divers have been down, and whatever hit those two didn't come from that site. May I keep this? Sure. Be my guest. Well, thanks again, Captain. Wish I could have been of more help. Let's do our own search. If there is a tank near the dump site, maybe we can find it with a metal detector. That's a good idea. I'll get clearance from the Coast Guard. Maybe we can plot the distance the tides and currents would have taken them. While you two do that, I'll go to the archives and check out more material on the waste site. It's a long shot, but you never know. I'll meet you back at the hospital afterwards. All right, Jonah, you pick up the metal detector and some respirators. I'll get the North Star and I'll meet you back here.
we've uh, met before, Dr. Roberts. I'm Alex Gould. I was very sorry to hear about your wife. Thanks for your concern, but I have to go. Dr. Roberts, do you think the toxins came from this town? I can't comment, and I really do have to go. on top of something. Let's see if we can pick it up. some way to narrow down the search area. North Star, North Star, this is Coast Guard. Come in, please, North Star. North Star, North Star, this is Coast Guard. Come in, please. Coast Guard, this is the North Star. Captain Myers? Please go to channel 64. Captain Myers? Brad, I've just heard from the hospital. It's Jake. He died half an hour ago. How is she? The same. The Army is sending their transport records over from Victoria by courier. We should have them by tomorrow. Are these the new emission samples? Yes, but there's nothing along the lines we're looking for. No dioxins, no insecticides, nothing that could turn itself into a lethal gas. Dunbar here. Hi, Nicole. Yes, he is. Just a minute. Hi. Dad, I found something at the archives. When the Army Disposal Unit shipped its cargo to the dump site in the 50s, they always sailed directly from Port Colby. Yeah. Well, the last shipment made in 1956 is just listed as toxic contents. 200 cylinders. Anything else? Well, not yet. But what if one of the shipments didn't make it to the dump site? What are you getting at? Who would dump toxic chemicals just anywhere in the ocean when there's a legal waste site? Hey, how about a sailor with a hot date in town? You know, in those days, nobody understood the harm that these chemicals can do. So what would be the difference if they just dumped it in the ocean? Dad, this has got to be it. I hope you're right, sweetheart. I'll see you later at the hospital. Did you get that? Well, I got the drift. 
But even if you're right, how are we going to find those cylinders? The shortest distance between two points. Triangulation. So, the army must have used this route for its cargo. You and Jonah searched the original search area. Uh, do you have JL's flight plan? Yeah. Here we go. Now let's see how this correlates. It fits. That's where we should be searching. Dad? Dad? Look. That's what you call dumb luck. Vancouver Coast Guard, this is the North Star. I'm in North Star. We think we found the location of the toxic gas, four and a half miles southwest of Point Herald. We're on our way, Dr. Roberts. Put your mask on. We don't want the cylinder, just what's in it. It was developed by the Army in World War II, but never actually deployed. Poison gas. Is there a treatment for exposure? I hope so. are examining her. They'll call us as soon as they're finished, and uh, the Navy's been called in to clean up that siren. Dad, take a look at this. Well, well, well. Dr. Roberts. I know what you must be going through. I hope your ordeal will soon be over. Thank you. I've just come from a public meeting where all candidates endorsed the idea of a long-term standing committee to supervise the cleanup of deep-sea toxic ocean wastes. I'd like you to head that committee. That's quite a reversal from your former position, Mr. Gould. Dr. Robert, my record on the environment is excellent. Can I speak to you privately? I have nothing to hide. No. As I remember, you consistently voted against cleaning up toxic dump sites. That was a federal responsibility. Did you work for the military in the 50s? I certainly did. On a ship called the Barclay? Yes. In 1956, the Barclay was subcontracted to haul a load of siren out to an ocean dump site. But that dump site was so far from Port Colby that you guys decided to chuck it overboard and hot-foot it back to town. That's not true. Mr. Gould, in my opinion, you and the crew of the Barclay should be held responsible for my wife's critical condition. And the death of an innocent I, fisherman. I, 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 uh, Mr. Gould, could you make a statement about that, sir? Uh, no, 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 no comment. No, I, I, Dr. Roberts.
grand. Did I oversleep? No. Just give me some coffee and I'll... Jail. Where you belong, darling. With us.